Hey guys. <laughs> I can't find anything today. This is all I've been looking for. I've used it every week. Why can't I find it? How's it going? So how is your day, everyone? I'm wearing, um, this is from It's So Easy, where I added lace to a t-shirt, to something fun. So today, I have a fun show for you, but there was a little change. So I invited Amy to come on the show because she won, congratulations, Amy, uh, the for pattern review. Uh, she took this jean dress and turned it into an adorable pantsuit. So um, just make turn this off. So anyways, she won, and I was going to bring her on live today, and so we decided we're going to do it next week. Uh, so you'll see her next week. I know I put it in there and you were excited, but be excited for next week. She'll be on here. So welcome, everyone. Hold on one second. Okay, I've been running around so much today that I accidentally left all my music blaring. <laughs> and my hair is a hot mess. You know, what are you gonna do, right? Welcome everyone, hey Wolfpack. If you've never been here before, say hi, say where you are from, because I know so many of you have met friends that way. And we are live streaming on Facebook and YouTube. So how's Wynn doing? Wynn is doing better, he's at home. I just left him, that's why I kind of look like a hot mess. I ran back here to the studio to do the live stream. And um, I told told him he has to rest. Please just sit for like one day. He just came home from the hospital yesterday. So um, if you all know when, he does not like to rest. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed. While I'm live for an hour, if anybody sees him out mowing the lawn or doing anything crazy, <laughs> I'm teasing, he better not be doing that. So, but thank you guys. And thank you so much because um, this was a this all started last week, right now. Last week at this exact time, right before I went live, Wynn came in here and he had a headache. And that's how it all started. Actually, he had bumped his head on the boat, and the cut was about that big, like that big. Barely could see it. It wasn't even bleeding. And that's what got infected. So you just never know. And now Today's not the day that you really want to be anytime, anywhere near the ER, but we made it. And thanks, you guys, for keeping us, keep our mascot healthy. Oh, <laughs> oh, I love you guys. So what I have for you today, by the way, is I'm going to show you something cool on the serger. So we've talked, I've shown you a couple of things. If you've missed some of these videos, you can go back and see how to do the rolled hem. So last week I did the rolled hem. And then I got messages that, why didn't you show us how to finish the scarf? So I did it the following day. So you can go back and see both of those. And today we're going to do a gathering because I thought this would be kind of fun. Oh, we have, we have got almost every country. I'm just scanning this. This is awesome. We have a worldwide event going today. Absolutely. And Jane, I am too. <laughs> Always on the go, that's for sure. All right, so while you're rolling in, I'm just, grab your cup of tea. I'm just getting my book. Remember I showed you this? I put this together a long time ago. Let me find my one on gathering. Oh, look, we've got Canada. Hey, Heather, nice to see you. I just sent you an email, by the way. Jan, great to see you. And Jan, I felt so bad. You were so excited to see Joanne and I last Friday, and I'm sorry I had to cancel it. So I'm going to talk to Joanne. I'm going to message her uh, later this afternoon and find out when we can do a replay on that show. I know it was for Mother's Day, but I think it would still be useful. We're going to show a lot of cool things about cards and gifts, and maybe there's birthdays or weddings or something like that coming up. So I will definitely let you know as soon as we reschedule that. All right, so gathering on the serger. Did you know that, here we go. I'll pull this out because I think you'll see it better. So this is how I do my little booklet. I fill it in, your serger might be different, but then I put a sample in here of what it looks like. So this is a very wrinkled itty bitty sample, but this gives you an idea. So you're able to gather fabric in one swoop. 
It finishes the edges, it gathers the fabric. This is great if you're trying to upcycle a little t-shirt into a dress for kids or something like that. But can think of all the home deck. Now, I didn't get back here in time to go dig downstairs in my stash to look for the pillows I've done uh, with the gathering, but you can really do a lot of cool things. I have pillows, I have handbags, all those fun things. So let's see what I got back here, if this is more. Yeah, for a bed, that would be great for something at the bottom of a bed. You like the little ruffle that goes around? Yeah, the book just keeps things organized. I have some extra. You know, I found a whole bunch of these books downstairs. I will look before next week to see if they are actually filled with all the sheets uh, because I would be more than happy to throw them up on the website for a discounted rate to get them out of here. <laughs> it was from a class, like, oh, I don't know. 10 years ago or something. All right. So you ready to meet me at the machine? I'm just making sure you all are here. You are. And Amy, we will see you next week. I can't wait for that. All right. So let me take this off the screen so it doesn't get in your way. Let's see. Let me find it on here. Somewhere. There we go. Okay, so I will meet you at the other end of the room. <laughs> How's that? Here you go. Okay, make sure my mic's on. Perfect. And I can see your comments from here. All right, just bring you a little closer. I think you can see that okay. I can see your comments. So if you can't see something or something goes weird, let me know. So here's my little sheet. So if you remember last week, we were doing the roll hem and I just put the finger, the stitch finger back in here to put the machine and I did a stitch to make sure it looks okay. Now I have the narrow stitch on here. So I think for this one, let me just see. I think usually I use the left needle. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but yeah, you can use either needle. So see how narrow this is? Let me bring this in. This is just a three thread overlock. Bring that just a little bit closer. There you go. See that okay? bit of hair in there too. So this is the three thread overlock. So you could use the, the right needle or the left needle. You could also use a four thread overlock, whichever one you want, but I'm going to do the three thread. So let me just surge off with the right pedal. Remember you can chain off or cut it off. There's a little thing on the side to pull that. This is my tray for all my junk. And I'll bring this back out to show you what we're going to do. So there's a foot for gathering. And check your machine because a lot of the sergers come with this foot. Otherwise, you can get it. Just call your brother dealer. This is what it looks like. Make sure I got the right one. Yeah. The gathering foot. So if you look closely, this has a little layer through here where fabric can slide through. So let me just show you close up. See how fabric slides right through there? So when that's in there, you have a bottom area, fabric goes through here and fabric will go below it. Otherwise that's what the foot looks like. So put your needle in the up position, change your foot. I have a blog post that shows you how to take a kid's t-shirt and add a little skirt to it. It's such a cute thing. I should do it for my sister's girls. They would love that. All right, so on here, it tells me my stitch width is going to be a five millimeter. Let me turn it to the side so you can see here. Stitch length is going to be three millimeters. So remember yesterday, or last week we were on rolled hem. Now we're up to three. This is your stitch length. And let's see. Differential feed. This is the big thing that we're going to change. So this is what controls the feed dogs, how fast they go. So change this. I'm changing it to two, which is the highest. 
You can adjust the gathers, by the way, by adjusting the stitch length. So I can make this higher or lower, and I'll show you the difference, how it does that. You can adjust how much gathering you're doing. And I can also adjust the gathers by changing this. So I'm going to leave this at two, and I'm going to leave this at three for right now. As far as all of the tensions, these should all just be back to the standard number four. Okay. And again, you could use the left needle or the right needle. Usually when I gather, I use the left needle, but I don't feel like changing it. So we're just going to leave it for now. Now, when I get ready to go, I have my, my knife is engaged. So you're actually going to be cutting the fabric on the bottom level. The bot this bottom piece, we're going to be cutting and finishing the edge. On the top piece, you want to make sure, actually, let's just use this as a top piece. You can see that's cut pretty, pretty straight. You want to make sure that's nice and straight all the way across. And then here's my bottom piece. Your bottom piece is going to be longer than the top one. Uh, how much? It really depends. What I usually do is I'll do a sample, a short sample, and measure how much of the bottom piece compared to the top that I, then I'll know, like, if you're trying to do your own pattern. Or, you know, you're trying to de decipher how much fabric you really need. What I usually do is I'll gather the fabric. If I'm doing a project, I'll gather all the fabric and then sew the side seams or sew the seams. Uh, so even if they're off a little bit, it won't matter so much. Just an easy way. So to get started, just bring this a little bit closer. This I have this on the bottom. Just lift up your foot, slide this down, and just surge just to get it started. You can see it's already starting to gather a little bit. And that's due to the stitch length and the differential feed. All right? Making sure one of you aren't texting me to tell me you can't hear. <laughs> nope. That wasn't you. All right, make sure your foot is in the down position. It looks weird because this is actually, that's the, the angle of the foot. So it is actually in the down position. So now that I've stitched just a few stitches, now go ahead and take your second layer of fabric and slide it right inside of this here. And it, the fabric will butt up right against this edge here. And you'll trim it as you stitch. You have to get it going at first, feed it in a little bit. It takes just a second, which is why I like to have some extra. All right, and now you need to just hold both of these layers separately. Bring this out just a smidge. There you go. Now, as I'm holding these, this layer, I'm just, I'm not pulling anything. I'm just holding these separate. So this, I'm kind of pushing this way the top piece, so it goes against this lever here, and the bottom piece, I'm just holding in place because it's trimming off the edge at the same time. So let me just do a little check and make sure it's gathering. It is, not a lot, just a little bit. Now I'm gonna change the adjustments just a little bit. I'm going to change the length. Let's go a little bit longer and see if that makes a difference. I'll bring this in so you can kind of see. Turn this to the side. So you can see it's gathering. Still not a lot though. So here's another trick for you. I'm gonna change, now I'm gonna change it to a two and see if that makes a difference. And then I'm going to the knob on the top. That's my last resort. Can't quite see in there. Hold on a second. Too small of a space. I'm just going to surge off so you can see this a little bit better. All right. So let me just show you from this side. This is where we started. Just like this. And then I adjusted it to a longer stitch length. You can see right from here to here, and then to a narrower stitch length. So let's see what it looks like on when we open this up. So when I open this up, you can see the gathers just a little bit. Then when I lengthen the stitch length, I don't really see that much of a difference. 
Now, when I made the stitch length a little bit shorter, that's quite, a, that's tighter. That's a tighter gathering. So let me show you one more trick. Now, this is just a medium weight cotton, but can you see this knob up here? Righty tighty, lefty loosey. If you turn this right just a little bit, make it a little bit tighter, that pushes the foot against the fabric a little bit more. So now watch this. This is going to be a little bit different. Just cut some my fabric, cut a new piece here, and then I'll, I'll bring you back up to the main camera so you can see this. All right, so on the bottom, we have our fabric that we're starting with. Get this spread out of the way. All right, and now I'm going to put my second piece on because I just got it started. And once you know it's connected, then go ahead and surge with this. Let's just see. Oh yes, that's much better. Now I just also wanna see the difference of adjusting the length just a little bit. I'm gonna put it back at a 4.0. And now I'll do a 3.0. You'll be able to see the difference when I come out of this. And then the last tip for you is if you still are not having good gathers. Let's see. I think we're doing pretty good now. Yeah, this is way better. Can you see that in here? Much, much better. So the last tip, though, is while you're doing this, if you're still having problems getting it together, you can hold this top piece just a little bit tighter and then let the other one feed under. That helps to make a little bit more gathers as well. So just. Look at how much better that is. So that was just from tightening that presser foot to make it a little bit tighter against the fabric. That looks great. That's how simple it is to gather your fabric. So let me just show you. Let's just say, okay, now that would make a great bed skirt or something, but what if you want to add this whole piece that's gathered? So I like to make pieces of like big swatches of fabric, and then I can use this to cut other cut out a garment. So obviously this could be attached to the bottom of a t-shirt and make a cute skirt. But what about if you want to have panels? So now I would go, if I want this piece to be gathered, which because it's gathered over here, I would go around to this side. I'm just going to make this a little bit narrower. So I'm just going to put it about right here. Stitch just a little ways. Because that the bottom piece is the one that's going to gather. So I have the gather and the gather together. And then let's just take another, let's see. Let me just cut another piece here. <laughs> Jeff, if you're watching, I promise I have much bigger Kai scissors laying around here. It just happens to be that's all I have right at this spot. <laughs> He's probably thinking, what on earth are you doing with that little pair cutting fabric? Hey, it works, doesn't it? All right, slide this in place. Get it started. You always, I always like to have at least an inch at each end that could be what I call air. If you know, if you need more room or it's not catching as fast as you like, something like that. So bring you a little closer. Again, I'm just going to feed the bottom piece through, keeping my hands away from the knife. And just hold this top piece just a little bit. Just because both of this fabric's a little bit stiffer. I'm at a stitch length of two and a half, in case you're wondering. Let's 
getting rid of all my extra fabric. I'm going slow because my hand's underneath here. All right, we're almost to the end. So by the way, some great fabrics for this is like Soap Dupioni. I did that for a bag. If any of you are in my blueprint classes, you probably saw this on there. Check that out. Two layers of, so now we have a panel of gathering. Oops, I missed a spot right there. I'll, well, I wasn't paying attention. So let's just look down at this spot. See how this is all gathered? If I press this, I could just do a whole bunch of panels like this and then use this on a garment or on a bag or something like that. You don't wanna do something with that little hole right there. But I could still go fix it if I really wanted to, but this is just trash fabric. But you get the idea? I'll bring, I'll bring it to the bigger camera. If I don't trip. No tripping. No more visits to ER this week. <laughs> All right. So now I will just make sure that um, you guys can see this and then I'll take your questions. So ignore the little spot right here. But every other than that, see how this is like a panel of fabric. And this is what I was talking about. Now, I just had scraps of fabric here, but I usually leave some extra at the end. Like, notice how these are not even. So what I do is once I have my fabric together, then I would go and trim that off. And so I would have one nice piece. And then once I press it, you'd have the gatherings in the middle. So there's different ways to do that. And also, if you have any problems with your fabric sliding, like if you have a hole like what I just did there, just use the left needle. I just didn't feel like changing it. But if you use the left needle, it's pretty much foolproof, unless your fabric slides too much. All right, so I'm just going to go through and see what questions. Ask your questions. I know there's a delay, but I will uh, make sure I go through these. Oh, Melody made pillows with panels like that. Yeah. The, well, it's just so fast and easy on the serger. Now, if you have to gather one little piece of fabric to a certain aspect of a pattern, like say, like right here or um, one area, then you probably just want to use a sewing machine because it's really hard to be exact on the serger. Well, it's trickier, I should say. I mean, you can still do it. It's just trickier. Oh, I know, searching is so fun. So how I learned all of this is a blueprint years ago when it was Craftsy had asked me to do a searching class. And I thought, okay. And they said, tell us what else a serger could do. I had, I really, you know, I only used a couple of things. I went through the, the manual and just started playing with all of these fun things. I'll tell you what, it is, it's a ball. And it still does way more, like blind hem. We'll do blind hem next week. Did you know you can hem your pants with a serger? Cut off the edges and finish it at the same time. Yeah. Very cool. Oh, I make it look easy, but I did have a little boo-boo. That's what you call live. Let's see. I'm just, I just saw a question roll through here. Can you gather like that with the cover stitch machine? No. Well, I've never tried, I should say that. But the other thing is with the chain stitch, you can gather a little bit with the chain stitch. I haven't tried it, though. So I, um, if you did it on the cover stitch, you'd have to use the chain stitch. But again, I haven't tried it, so I can't say for sure. Blind hem, yes, blind hem's next week. That'll be a good one, because I'll do the blind hem and the ladder stitch, which looks like, do you know what the ladder stitch looks like? Oh, let me find it. So here's the blind hem where on this side, this is a ladder stitch. See how it sticks out? Now a blind hem would be where you can't see those. So you adjust that. And then on the back side, it's finished the edges and hemmed it all in one. That'll be a good one. Oh, I've got a ton more. We could do a serger tip for the whole rest of the year. Speaking of serging, I pulled out this sample because I got so many questions from you guys the other day. So the leggings pattern, I found one minor mistake this morning. I had already digitized everything on it and turned them into PDFs. And I found one minor mistake. 
I graded the ankles wrong, which you would have noticed, trust me. So I just finished fixing it right before I came live. So it'll take a couple hours to redigitize them into PDF patterns, but at least I caught it before you printed them all off. But with the leggings, some of you asked why I like to use woolly poly or woolly nylon and what does it look like? So this was from the cover stitch. I showed this a couple weeks ago. See how, how much that fills in the back? It stretches in and out of place. And then from the front, that's just regular serger thread. Yeah. So I know somebody asked me that, so I brought that out. Yep. A serger gathers. So just remember, it's the differential feed between the differential feed and the stitch length. Kind of just play with both of those. And it really depends how thick your fabric is. Oh, yeah, Cindy. So the leggings pattern is in the Fashion Sewing Club right now first. So if you're not in the Fashion Sewing Club, you might as well join for May because the pattern's free in there. It's only 15 bucks a month. You'd pay more for that than the pattern. Uh, and the pattern will be up sometime this afternoon. But we're doing virtual uh, tutorials on it. How It's basically a virtual pattern since we can't do printing with the booklets. You can still get the pattern printed, um, but there's no booklet. It's all PDF and virtual. So I'm going to teach you how to fit them and how to sew them. They're pretty simple, but I just thought that would be easier. Yes. Uh, oh, you made your pocketbook on your serger. Nice, nice. Uh, what cover stitch do I use? Well, Karen, for full disclosure, I'm a brand ambassador for Brother. So it's a Brother, but I have the uh, CV. Hold on, I gotta look at the name. It's the double cover stitch. I use two of them. Let me go look real quick. The CV 3350. I'll just put the camera on it so you can see it. Get my chair out of the way. It's in the corner. Here you go. It's that one. Oh, of course, the camera went off. Hold on a sec. Try now. Oh, no, it's not going to work. Never mind. It was worth the thought, though, right? I'll try one more time. <laughs> there you go. There it is. <laughs> and it does the double cover stitch. And you can see I used it a couple weeks ago. So if that helps. So I wanted to show you. Oh, how uh, can you serge lace to a shirt with a serger? Yeah. This one, you could serge this to a serge lace. Yeah, totally. Apron is the week of the 18th. Yes, yes. And here it is. Molly's apron. I put this on my website. Go to AngelaWolf.com and look at the blog. I got this from Molly. I just got the whole kit. So then I could sew this together. So every day we're going to have different people on talking about embroidery, how to use maybe the scan and cut. Um, you're going to have so many ideas for aprons. You'll have a different apron for the entire summer. Uh, the machine next to the cover stitch was my blind is my blind hem machine. I bought it probably 20, 20 years ago when I was running a full um, custom apparel business and then some alterations, but mostly custom apparel. It saves so much time, but yeah, it's really old. Where do I go for the video for the nice waistband on the leggings? Well, there's a couple, Sharon, in the Fashion Sewing Club. We're going to be doing this tomorrow and next week. So those will be live. I have some videos on my YouTube channel. So if you go to AngelaWolf.com, there you go. You can click on the YouTube channel. I have a ton of videos there. I also have, um, for those of you on Blueprint, I just did a video for them with the leggings. If you want to get a head start, that was in... Um, in their maker space area. Home make. I can put a link for that. I just have to find it. Uh, but I showed how to make the leggings and they sh and they made it really fast and easy. Something at home. Uh, what was the best thread to use? So Donna, for the serger, I use just standard thread in the needles. Your thread should not be breaking. So check if the thread is old and also check your tension. If your tension is too tight, it will break the thread. 
Also check that your thread doesn't wrap around that little spindle underneath the um, thread, because that's happened to me. Oh, thanks, Mary. Uh, where did I get the pattern for the apron? I went to Molly's website. Let's see. I had it saved on here. Hold on a second. Molly, are you on here? It's Molly made, but okay. You can find her at facebook.com forward slash mollymade.handmade. But she has a full Etsy site where you can get just the pattern or you can get the pattern with all of the things. And she, she put it on sale until the end of next week. So if you guys want this pattern. Hey, Kelly, do you remember the link? Do you have the link saved to Molly's website to her Etsy store? If you do, put it in there. Did I sew for anybody famous? Uh, let me think. Well, I sewed for a lot of executive wives that were in themselves quite famous all over the world. So I dressed people from everywhere, uh, which was kind of cool. Famous? Hmm. I have to think about that because I'll feel bad if I don't remember. <laughs> Everybody was famous that I met. <laughs> I just loved making clothes for people. And now I love making patterns for you, except when I find a stupid mistake like I did today. <laughs> Uh, is there a discount for the Fashion Sewing Club? Trisha, um, it's just $14.97 a month. So no, there's no, but inside the Fashion Sewing Club is where all the discounts are. So in the Fashion Sewing Club, you get a 25% discount to all my entire website. So all my patterns, clappers, all that. You also get a discount to my other classes on academy.angelawolf.com. So um, I have my knits class on there. I have the couture jacket class. Oh my gosh, that's starting on Monday. I totally forgot. Monday's the cutoff to register for that class. So that is at academy.angelawolf.com. I think I have, you can also get it from my main website. Let's see, here you go. That, so the couture jacket class is very similar to my Chanel style jacket, but that, you know, that's trademarked, so I'm not saying that. Um, but it's virtual, so it's live. Every week there's gonna be a live class. We have a private Facebook group to share photos and questions. It launches on May 18th, and that's when the registration closes. So nobody can get in after the first day it starts. So don't be a procrastinator on this one, like I usually do. Don't you always see those sales and you're like, I'll get it at the last minute and then I forget. <laughs> uh, no, 18th, it cuts off. So, um, and there are discounts to that class in the Fashion Sewing Club that would well pay for your uh, month. <laughs> but wouldn't you guys say? I think it, the Fashion Sewing Club gets like 50% off. Hey, Steve, nice to see you. The jacket class. Yeah, Angie, it's the uh, couture jacket class. And it starts on Monday. So we are going to make a Chanel style jacket with the quilted lining. Um, it's not 100% couture because I also do some machine stitching, but it's an eight week class. You don't have to be present for all the live sessions, but uh, you can watch the replays and still participate. Thanks, Kelly. <laughs> Reply to Trudy. I had that last week. Closed captioning. You need to change your settings. Hey, thanks, Gertrude. Oh, Pam. Oh, it's not a stupid question. The Wolfpack. Well, actually, it's just all everyone that hangs that we all hang out with. Uh, I think Karina, you started it. <laughs> um, so we were just trying to come up with a fun name for uh, all of us that sew the Angel Wolf patterns, and they just started calling themselves the Wolfpack, and I thought it was pretty cool. And now we have our logo and our sign. All thanks to you guys. So that's all. But if you want to be part of our um, Angela of Patterns group, that's at, um, sorry, <laughs> that's at uh, facebook.com forward slash, it's the Angela of Patterns group, can't miss it. And Angie, the jacket class. Okay, and then before I let you guys go, I have to just do some bragging because some of you have been making some really awesome outfits and I'm going to do a show and tell. But I'll still answer your questions on the um, serger, <laughs> Karina. Thanks to Karina, we've got a whole logo for shirts and everything. All right, let's see. Here you go. You ready? I'm going to share my page. If it goes to the right one. There you go. So this is um, the Angelo Academy. I started this 
after Blueprint and Craftsy changed their things and I knew I wanted to start virtual classes. Well, ironically, this is before we got stuck in lockdown. So uh, you can go out here. Here's the Fashion Sewing Club. This is the essential knit to sewing knits. If you want to learn how to sew knits, this takes you from A to Z. Uh, but here's the Couture Jacket class that starts on May 18th. It's a virtual class and it tells you the things that are here. And this is the schedule for all eight weeks. And you can see the live session is listed on here, but the replay will be available immediately after. And you have an opportunity to ask questions before we even have that lesson. So just so you know. Okay, now I wanna just take this up for a second. But I gotta show the show and tell for what you guys have been sewing, cause it's awesome. All right, Pat. Pat, I have to tell you, this is the cutest outfit ever. Here's Pat. Look at that fabric. I would have sworn that you bought that from a boutique. The fabric, you must be in Florida because you just, it, the beautiful flowers. But I just love the necklace, the color. It looks, looks so good good with those pants. Oh my gosh, absolutely love it. So she made the Linda tunic and that was hands down one of my favorites this week. Well, there was a lot of favorites, but. All right, so hold on, there's more. And I'm just scanning up real quick because I just I saw a couple questions. Oh, thanks, Janet. And Jan, did you see the apron pattern? Molly's, I'll find her website before I'm done. And oh, Angie, so the registration, which you're in the fashion sewing club, I think. Uh, it uh, message me and I can help you find that. And just. Oh, that's what you're talking about. Okay, that's what I saw. I ordered the pattern. Do I need to have the fabric cut out for your class next week? Well, on um, I'm going to have the fabric cut out. So what you want to do for the apron, or are you talking about Lynetta? Are you talking about the jacket class or the apron? For the apron, I'm going to have all my fabric washed and ready to go, washed and dried for the apron, and I'll have all the pieces cut out. Uh, for the jacket class, you don't have to have anything prepped. For the first week, we're going to talk about fabric, how to prep your fabric, interfacing, so you don't have to have any of that ready. So for the jacket class, uh, you, you're good just having your fabric. And you don't even, even if you don't have your fabric yet, that first week is all about fabric, trims, what to gather, so you'll have time to order it if you need to. And thank you, Susan. Uh, thanks, Kristen. And okay, I already got the, the pattern. Okay, I think I got all of you. Oh, Molly ships fast too. Oh, Melsong, yes, uh, flat lock stitch. That's on there too. That's definitely on there. Okay, I think I got everybody uh, up here. If I missed a question, you guys just ask it again because there was so many. Oh, thank you, Reen. Thank you, thank you. I always do go to mollymade.com and it shows up in the wrong place. I should have it memorized by now. So if you don't have serger thread, can you use regular thread? Absolutely. In fact, quite often, especially when I was doing alterations, you didn't want to buy three spools of serger thread for one alteration that you wanted to match. So what I would do is just use regular thread. And that's totally fine. Universal thread. I've also used silk thread, uh, which for some, a really nice garment. I've also used embroidery thread when I wanted uh, like for the rolled hem and things like that. That just looks beautiful. So experiment with some of those. Just don't go too thick. If you're going to go the thick like the yarn and stuff like that, then put those only in the looper. Can use a serger for smocking insert. Ooh. Possibly. What stitch would you use for that? Let me do some checking on that. All right, now I'm scrolling down to where you guys had these questions. Hi, Arlene. She's on YouTube. And Arnell, I'm going to email you again. I emailed you yesterday. I got to help you figure out how to get into the website, so I'll email you. Can you explain needles for both serger and double cover stitch? That's a good question, Jane. So, okay, first of all, depending what serger you have, 
you really want to buy the size needles that you have uh, for your specific machine. So if you have a machine that's not a baby lock, that might have a specific size needle that you need. So keep that in mind. Now, uh, your serger, usually, typically, I leave a 12 or a 14, a number 12 or 14 in mine. If I'm having a problem with knits, uh, with skip stitches on the cover stitch machine, I will actually use a stretch needle, which now they have serger needles that are stretch. So they're pretty much, uh, you can, and I switch my cover stitch and serger needles all the time. So, but it depends on your model. So open your manual and see what size is needed for that. Because I know there's a few models that you have to have a certain uh, size, if that makes sense. Oh, Susan, you explained it so well. <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. <laughs> Hi, Tina. Great to see you. Uh, have you used the blind attachment for your cover stitch machine? If so, do you have, I have not used the binder attachment on the cover stitch in a long time. I have used it before, but I have um, not in a long time. I do have it over there. So I guess I could pull that one out of the <laughs> archives. You know who has, uh, I think who has a video on that is Emily. So check out Emily's YouTube page. You've seen Emily on Monday. She'll be here today at three. Well, on the brother page. She's actually on her page. So don't forget about that. So it gets shared to brother, which takes a few minutes. All right. And when is our mascot? I'll have to tell when that. Mary, he's going to love that. Hey, Amy, I don't know if you're still on here. Will you text me a photo of your pattern review win? Okay, it's not on here. I thought I'd have my phone. Hey, Yachty, welcome. Welcome to the pack. <laughs> there you are, Amy, you are on here. I thought I had saved that email for uh, you winning. So if just if you haven't, throw it on the phone. Because that you turned that dress into a really cute outfit, which we'll talk about next week. Oh, Christina, so glad that you guys are learning this. Uh, you didn't start it. You just made the logo. Well, the logo is cool, Karina. Uh, hey, Connie, just email me. Or you could message me on here. Just send, I'll go on Facebook Messenger and send me a message, and I'll look for it. <laughs> Glenda. Well, you have to have a, Shirley, I'm, I only got the first part of that. <laughs> oh, thanks, Janet. <laughs> You guys are great. All right, did you say we could get the leggings pattern printed large format from you? Jill, yes you can. And you can have it in a roll, shipped to you in a big roll. Uh, that's the only way those are available right now. So, and they'll be up uh, later today. So you can message me about that. All right, you guys have any more questions for me? Otherwise, I'm going to show you a couple more outfits in the Fashion Sewing Club that I just loved. The internet is so slow today. I don't know about you guys. All right, Karina. You know I'm going to have to put this up here. Karina says, if you don't have enough fabric, improvise. So she got... <laughs> She got this idea from when I wore this top the other day where the little slits out, which is that actually looks like my fabric even that I was wearing. And I love what you did to the sides. Great job on the twisted neckline. Super cute. Very fun. I had to share that one. All right, there's more. Hold on, I just got to find out. I always have to try to remember what page it's on. Oh, here we go, Melody. This this fabric is so much fun. Check this out. I could have sworn that you hand dyed this. Super cute. I love the lines on it. Very fun. Awesome. All right, I see a couple more questions while I'm looking for more. Do you ever adjust ready-made clothes in the shoulders so they do not ride up to your throat? <laughs> do you ever adjust ready-made clothes in the shoulders 
So they do not ride up to your throat. So Tammy, are you saying that your shirts are too high, but they fit here? So just cut out your neckline a little bit. We actually just talked about this in Fashion Sewing Club yesterday. So if you have something that fits and this is too high, hey, Helen, I got your message. <laughs> um, if this is too high, you can always cut your neckline down and if your shoulders fit just fine. Very easy alteration on ready to wear. Um, but I'd have to hear a little bit more about what you were talking about. Hey, Angie, message me and I will find that for you. Oh, you didn't dye it. <laughs> Very cool. Patty, that's why I sell my clothes. Well, you need a serger to make the jacket. No, the jacket is all sewing. And there's so first you sew the outside of the jacket to the lining, like quilted. And then we sew the jacket together. And then you have to hand stitch the lining. So if you hate hand stitching, it's not your cup of tea. But we're going to make designer trim and all of those things that are going to be really fun to do. My absolute favorite jacket in the whole whole wide world. Yeah. Everyone's on the internet. I know. Oh my gosh, Liz. Hey, Darlene, I didn't see your two questions. Where are they? Yeah. Hey, Cindy, if your internet is buffering, just so you guys know, you can watch the replay of this. So when it's over the live, you'll be able to watch replay, which is way better on buffering than live. And also, if you share it to your timeline, you can watch it again. And so I put the tutorial at the beginning. For those of you that don't like to chat, they could just like log off, right? And then we could chat with the Wolfpack. Oh, yeah, Cindy, I'll post that up. So the sizes right now are from 0 to 18. And then tomorrow, the size, I think it should be up by tomorrow or Friday, the 16W to 36W. Pretty much covers the whole Richter scale. Hi, Colleen. The apron is for next week, brother, brand ambassadors, and other people are taking over the page. So tomorrow, by the way, look what I have here. Those of you all know we love Reen. Reen is going to show us how to make this on my design center. Fully lined, zippered pouch for our scissors. How cool is that? Yeah, and I love the A, and I love this. Reen, I don't know where you got that, but that's my favorite. A gift from Reen, any day is awesome. I still have my fish hanging on the door. <laughs> okay, I'm just checking for your questions and then I'll show just a couple more. Hey Lauren, if you were at one of my events, just message me, all righty? Oh, Marty, I'll help, I'll, I have uh, put together a list of resources for silk linings. So, and I'll share those on Monday when we, um, and I think you'll be able to get them hopefully fairly quickly. Uh, best material for leggings. I would say a four-way stretch if you can get that. So like here are mine. Hold on. This is the pair I've been wearing nonstop. Now this, I have not finished the waistband yet because I wanted to show how to fit these. But this has, this is athleisure wear. This, you can actually find this one on my website. This is black, it has a four-way stretch. It's a little shiny, but I've worn these for dress, dress up, not that we're dressing up much, and I've worn them for workout wear. And then this pair I've worn for both as well. This is a little softer. And this has, again, a four-way stretch, athleisure wear. You want to find something with a four-way stretch. You could even do scuba knit. Now, when I say scuba knit, don't think like the really thick stuff that you're going to go diving with. It's just a term they're using that's a little bit thicker. So you, if you, if you want, you don't, you know, sometimes you wear leggings and they're really light and you can kind of see through them. Scuba knit's a good one to prevent that, just FYI. All right. I'll be using zipper by the yard. You need at least seven inches. Hey, thanks, Reen. Hey, Reen, if you have a list of supplies that everyone needs, uh, message me and I'll put them on my blog tonight. Oh, Ellen, you want something on? Ah, oh, you asked me this yesterday too. Um, 
Yes. You know what? I have some past videos, by the way, on YouTube and live shows of using, of making lace, but um, we haven't done that in a while. So I definitely can add that to my list coming up. Yep, Sandy, they're coming out. Those should be out tomorrow or Friday. The zero to 18 came first. Uh, where to buy knits? There's quite a few places, Anne. Um, I have quite a few on my website, angelofpatterns.com. If um, I think if you go to my blog, I have a whole list of places. If I don't, with these leggings, there'll be a whole list because I don't have every color. Reen is the ITH queen. In the hoop queen. <laughs> the apron challenge. So yeah, it's for everybody. We're doing it on the brother on the brother page. So anybody who joins us live, that's where it will be. All right. I'm just making sure I'm not missing any more questions. And I got one more, a couple more photos to share. Here you go, Melody. You had a couple things up this week. This one, I love this fabric, by the way. Just love it. Another great pattern. And I think I just saw one more on here. I always get confused if they're on this page or the Fashion Sewing Club Facebook. Okay, so Janet, here is Janet's. So we had this like funny chat about Janet where she made this as the Shirley and she had the flowers, half the flowers going up and half the flowers going down. And I have to tell you, it was adorable, but she had enough fabric to make another top, which was really fun. Bye, Tara. Have fun. All right, so let me just see if I can find her Shirley dress so you can see. Oh, this was from Christina. So Christina, you know, I have to work on that challenge from Matthew for my quilting. So she did this on the outside of her jeans, which was really fun. Isn't that cool? I'm working on my idea. I've tested a couple. I can't tell you because I want to make sure it works before I try it. It was very cute. <laughs> black is too plain. I know, but black is my go-to with all my tops. But that does, I've got pink and gray cut out. Well, I already have the gray ones sewn. I have two pairs of gray, one pair of black, pink, yellow, and white. I actually had some really cool printed, um, what do you call it, printed legging fabric that was supposed to be here, uh, but with all the shipping and delays, I haven't gotten it yet. And it'll be for sale. Yeah, I bought enough to sell a little bit. So here was the dress, and I have to tell you, Janet, this is so cute. She made the Shirley. So she was saying that the flowers were going down and they were going up someplace else. But I have to tell you, I cannot tell at all. There's the up ones and there's the down ones. Super cute. So even if you thought it was a mistake, it is. Uh, it totally works. Arnell, you, no way. Arnell, did you found purple for your leggings? I can't wait to see these. <laughs> uh, Veronica, Matt Jersey, you could use Matt Jersey, but... Um, Depending on the thickness of matte jersey, that might be a little too thin for leggings. So you might want something. I mean, matte jersey makes a great drape, like a loose legging, like a loose with a tie, a waist. You know, that kind of legging would be perfect for that. I agree. The design feature, Pam says, absolutely. All right, and I know there was there was a really good looking jacket. Let me find that. Oh no, no, here, Babette. How did I miss this? Gorgeous fabric. I absolutely love this. Let me make this bigger. Here you go. Super cute. I love this area here. Great job on the collar. Oh uh, yeah, you could use swimsuit fabric, Louise. Bye, Nancy. Great to see you. Uh, Lorraine, I have not, but in the Fashion Sewing Club, every Friday, we've been doing uh, fabric stash sales, which is kind of fun. It's like an auction. We, it just kind of came about. But while I do that, I teach about the fabrics that I'm grabbing out of my stash to get rid of. 
four way stretch is the best for leggings, but it doesn't have to be, Jen. So these leggings do not have an outside leg seam, so they have to have some stretch. My, I have a couple other leggings patterns coming out would have side seams and then you don't have to have quite as much stretch. Let's see. So Donna, I actually use Wooly Poly uh, and I collaborated with the company. So I've been using mine uh, here. You can find it on my website. Wooly Nylon, I use a few different kinds. It's so fun, Kay. You guys started that. I have more fun doing that. I hated to cancel that last week. Okay, here's another Linda tunic. Oh, Ellen, that's where I saw your message. Yes, I will. I will message you back. I knew I recognized your name. <laughs> Bye, Jan. Great to see you. Okay, very, very cute. All right, I'm going to look for one more thing because there was a jacket I'm just looking for real quick, and then I'm going to let y'all go. I got to go check on when. Oh, here we go. There's Amy, which we will see Amy next week. She did the Shirley in a longer dress. Very cute. Love the way you did those stripes, by the way. Oh, Felicia, I totally agree. It is hard to find the fabric for the pattern. <laughs> All right, but I'm going to help any way I can with a few things that we're sewing it. Here's Karina's again. This is uh, where she actually did this, the peep in the shoulder and the twisted neckline. Very cute. All right. Here's Babette's. I don't think we saw this the last couple weeks because we've been so busy doing other things. You guys have a lot of clothes up in here. This, I just love this with the button on the side. Great job on the collar. They That looks great with your jeans. Super, super cute. Love the back. I think the linen tunic is absolutely one of my favorite tops. That's the one that I said eventually I want to make another one with... Um, lace sleeves. So maybe that's when I'll teach how to use that. All right. And I, the jacket must be in the other group. Here's Dany. Hey, Dany, I love this fabric. Again, there's the Shirley. Super cute. All right, guys, the Chloe Trench is going to probably have to wait till next week because we're just about out of time. Uh, yeah, it's not in here. Oh, well. What do you do? <laughs> I do hope Wynn is doing good, too. You guys, thank you so much. Oh, everybody's wearing wrap dresses. Susan, see, I told you I keep you guys way ahead of the trends, right? Do you know where your next set of lace is coming out? Well, Janet, um, it's supposed to come out in June, but it, not till the end of June. That's all I know at this point. Let's just say I have it, though. So if I decide to sew the samples faster than the end of June, then it could come out faster. Oh, yeah. Emily Thompson at three. Thanks, Patricia. Now, by the way, Emily Thompson will be on at three. If you want to see her from the beginning, go to Emily Thompson's Facebook page. I will be sharing it to the brother page, but it takes a few minutes for it to pop up and it takes a few minutes for it to pop up on Brother Sews. So keep that in mind. Oh, you're welcome, Gigi. Thanks, Brenda. So, Yes, it's so great to see you guys. And this was, I love doing the behind the scenes on uh, my page because I can sit and chat with you guys for a little bit. <laughs> and thank you, Susan. Thank you. Thank you. So tomorrow, so you have Emily at three today. Tomorrow, Fashion Sewing Club, I'll see you at two. I switched it from this morning because I had to take Wynn somewhere. Um, and then at four, we will have Reen. I can hardly wait. And then Friday... At noon Eastern Standard Time, I'm going to be showing you how to do this. 
applique towel. This is all applique and embroidered. And we're going to be giving away two sewing machines. Two. Because last week I had to cancel at the last minute. Sorry. But, you know, that's two sewing machines on Friday. Thank you, brother, for the great donation. All right, guys, I will go and check my messenger. I know I've got like a million messages in there and like half of them are spam. So forgive me if I haven't gone in there to peek. But if you have a if you have a question for me, uh, message me or email me and I will, as soon as I get home and check on when, well, I mean, I'm almost pretty much home, but <laughs> I will um, sit down and answer those. All right, guys, have a wonderful day. And uh, thanks again. Thanks, brother, for letting us take over their page and share our things. We've had a lot of fun with this. And we still have quite a few weeks in May to finish this. So awesome. Emily is at 3 Eastern. Yep, Kelly. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, Janet, for joining on YouTube. Eastern. Yep, yep. Bye, Emma. A lot of you are on YouTube. Awesome. And Darlene, I still did not see your question. So message me because I did not see those when I scrolled back through here. Emily's webpage. She is at um, Life So Savory. Life So Savory. And I think, let's see if I have it on here. Here you go. That's Emily's page. And I think for those of you who kept asking about Instagram, here you go. There is Instagram to follow. All right, I think I got you all. Thank you, Pat. Thanks, Esther. Uh, Emily's last name, Thompson. Thompson, Thompson. And you go to Life So Savory. You're welcome, June. Hey, Susan, looking at RVs. Or Sharon, that's Sharon. That sounds like a fun project. Have a good day, everyone. All right, I'm out of here. Oh, thanks, Susan. You guys have a great day. I'll talk to you tomorrow. See ya.